Hello, my name is Francesco Ciabattoni. I am a professor in the Georgetown University Department of Italian, and here is my module on musical instruments in Dante's Divine Comedy. When we consider the musical aspects of the Divine Comedy, we must first of all realize that at the beginning of the 14th century, when Dante wrote it, many notions about music were very different from today. While Dante was very fond of Gregorian chant and sacred polyphony, his taste in musical instruments was grounded more in their symbolical associations than in actual musical practice. This is not to say that Dante was not versed in making music. If, as his earliest biographer Giovanni Boccaccio said, he greatly delighted in playing and singing in his youth. But the medieval mind looked at things as to signs in search for meaning. And they did so with musical instruments, too. So if a psaltery, for example, was made with sinew and wood, as the Bible said that David used it to drive a demon out of King Saul's body, the medieval would think that it must be the figural image of Christ on the cross. And that was the source of its power. Many musical instruments are mentioned in the Divine Comedy, although most appear in a figure of speech. The only instrument that does not appear in a figure of speech, but is actually present in the narration, is Nimrod's horn in Canto 31 of Inferno. But I heard a horn blast that would have made the loudest thunderclap seem faint. This is a louder horn, Dante says, than Roland sounded at Roncesvalles. Nimrod, the mighty hunter, is here given gigantic proportions and cannot speak properly as a punishment for arrogantly building the Tower of Babel. Nimrod also sounds a blast on his horn, showing his complete lack of musical expression. All other instruments are mentioned in metaphors or similes that the poet employs for both aesthetic purposes and to symbolically express spiritual or theological values. Metaphors and similes consist in the transfer of meaning upon a different signifier. And Dante, as a medieval artist, followed the general principle that the portrayal of numerous and varied instruments was founded upon psychological, not practical, considerations, as Edward Bowles put it in a seminal article in 1957. And as music historian Bruce Holsinger has it, music played a central imaginative and ideological role in medieval representation of the human body. In the Commedia, we find a wealth of such bodily associations for musical instruments. One of them is ever the favorite of Italian teenagers who all studied the Divine Comedy for three years in high school. This is the devil's fart in Inferno 21. Off they set along the left-hand bank, but first each pressed his tongue between his teeth to blow a signal to their leader, and he had made a trumpet of his asshole. This scene represents a squad of devils whose leader, Malacoda, which translates as evil tail, uses this degrading form of bugle to master his soldiers. The devils, of course, make for terrible soldiers and cannot follow their orders or keep discipline. They will end up fighting among themselves. When it comes to stringed instruments, we find the lute in Inferno 30. And then in Paradiso, we find the kithara, an ancestor of the guitar, the harp, and the lyre. While technically different, kithara, harp, and lyre all possessed similar symbolical associations with David and divine musicianship. David was able to use his instrument, variously portrayed in iconography as a kithara, a psaltery, or a harp, to heal Saul from a demon's haunting. 
lyre, harp, and kithara are all variants of the same instrument, the psaltery, whose salvific importance was such that a book of the Bible was named after it. The lyre was also the instrument of Apollo, the Greek god of the arts, so that too was sacred in its own right. The psaltery, or its analogues, was attributed with the ability to bring about spiritual healing because it was made of wood and strings, corde in Latin, just like the cords of the cross were made from animal nerves. The psaltery was considered to be a figure of Christ crucified. This figural property is what granted David the power to defeat the demon in Saul's body, as in the first book of Samuel. Christian writers explained the Kitharas' divine powers on the basis of its resemblance to the cross. The high consideration they gave the Kithara, or Chetra, as Dante calls it, is reflected in both the Commedia and the Convivio. Here is how the combined voices of six blessed souls, Trajan, David, Hezekiah, Constantine, William the Good, and Refuse, composing the eye of a sacred eagle in Dante's Paradiso, sound in his own text. As a sound is given shape at the neck of the kithara or by the wind forced through the vent holes of a bagpipe, if Dante in Paradise 20 uses Cetra and Sampogna as musical metaphors, what the pilgrim actually hears is the voices of six souls blended together and speaking in a harmony while expressing the mysterious concord of divine justice. Sampogna is a vulgarization of symphonia, an instrument capable of producing more than one sound at the same time. The Grove Music Dictionary describes it as an instrument similar to a bagpipe, possibly deriving from Sumponia in the Book of Daniel 3.5. Or the hurdy-gurdy. Since the instrument evoked in Dante's text works with wind forced through vent holes, it must be a bagpipe rather than a hurdy-gurdy, as confirmed by early commentators. But back to the kithara. Dante attributes it with a neck, thus distinguishing it from the harp or psaltery, which do not have a neck, even if they share the same salvific associations. There exists an iconographic tradition that represents the body of David as one and the same with his instrument. Quite interestingly, when we look at Dante's least favorite chordophone, the lute, we also find it associated with a body part. In Canto 30 of Inferno, the bloated belly of the falsifier Master Adam is compared to the sound box of a lute. One I saw, fashioned like a lute, had it been sundered at the groin from the joining where a man goes forked. The heavy dropsy which afflicts the body with its ill-digesting humor so that the face and belly do not match. The illumination of David as one and the same with the psaltery comes from a 12th century German psalter and the descriptive text around it reads obesum ventrem, fat belly. The author must have confused the shape of the psaltery, which has no belly, with that of a kithara, which indeed has a belly. What counts here is that Dante describes the bloated belly of Master Adam as a lute, so following the bodily discourse that medieval theorists carried forth in association with musical instruments. The falsifier Master Adam having coined false florins, is punished here with never-ending dropsy and a scorching thirst. The lute later became a quite highbrow instrument, and even Boccaccio assigns it to a refined social entertainment in the hands of his favorite character, Dioneo, in the Decameron. But opinions on and representations of the lute change across time. For example, here in circa 1500, 
Hieronymus Bosch portrays it as a monstrous crossbred with a harp. The lute is of Arabian origin, called Al Ud in Arabic, and entered Europe during the 9th century Moorish occupation of Spain. Miniatures are found in the Cantigas de Santa Maria, a Spanish Portuguese royal music manuscript dated 1260 1280. According to an old Arabian legend, the origin of the lute is linked to a dead human body. Lamak, a grandson of Adam, the original Adam, made the first lute out of his son's dead body, specifically from one of his legs, and the angled foot became the bent peg palette. When Master Adam calls Sinan an impersonator, a Greek who had pretended to be a friend of the Trojans only to get them to bring in the horse, Sinan feels insulted and hits Adam on the belly. And one of them who took offense, perhaps at being named so vilely, hit him with a fist right on his rigid paunch. It boomed out like a drum. Master Adam's deformed body has been seen as a perverse parody of Christ crucified, a counterfeit cross, as he was a counterfeiter. And so the lute, an instrument of Arabic origin, is cast as Dante's parody of the divine harp, lyre, kithara. The association of David's psaltery with Christ's cross is explicit in Christian literature in texts by Cassiodorus, Bede, and Isidore of Seville. This thesis can be reinforced by considering the image of David as crucified to his own instrument in the German Psalter, and by turning to patristic literature, namely to passages such as this commentary on the Psalms by Augustine, in which precisely the Psaltery and the drum are compared to crucifixion. Augustine says, on the drum, leather is stretched. On the psaltery, gut is stretched. On either instrument, the flesh is crucified. Finally, in Purgatory, Canto 9, Dante likens the sound of the opening gates of the realm of atonement to the loud and disconcerting sound of a large church organ. And when the hinges of that sacred door, which are of heavy and resounding metal, were turning on their linchpins, the Tarpeian rock roared not so loud, nor proved so strident when good Metellus was drawn away and it was then left bare. I turned, intent on a new sound, and thought I heard Te Deum Laudamus in voices mingled with the sweet sound, giving me the same impression one has when listening to singers accompanied by an organ and the words are sometimes clear and sometimes lost. In this passage, a church song is sung, Te Deum Laudamus, which was used to celebrate the initiation of a priest. Here the pilgrim Dante is being welcomed into purgatory, where expiation takes place, and the accompaniment is that of a large church organ. Such majestic instruments were rare in the Middle Ages. But Dante could have seen one in the church of Santissima Annunziata in Florence. Or he could have read about them in theoretical literature. Not many medieval organs survive today, but we do possess a replica made from some original pieces of a very old water organ in the Aquincum Museum in Budapest. We also possess images in woodcuts and illuminations of air organs built in the late medieval period. The conclusion we should draw from all this is that Dante's use of metaphors and similes with musical instruments are not merely decorations of the text. These figures of speech carry a meaning. They imbue the text with a metaphysical message that Dante uses to make the theological content of the Divine Comedy into a beautiful poem.